This question doesn't even make sense. How can minimalist and shopping mix in one sentence? I think we can, as long as we are human. No matter how extreme you are with minimalism, there will come a time when we need to buy something. Unless you can grow your own food, build your own shelter, and maybe you can even make your own clothes. But I guess you probably wouldn't even watch this video. There's no way we can make no purchase in today's world, not even a minimalist. But minimalism is all about shopping intentionally. But how can we do that? We have already made so much effort to declutter. We also need to have the awareness of what we bring into our lives. So, I've created 12 questions to ask ourselves before we make any purchase, so we can shop intentionally. And let me start with the first. Is that an impulse? The first thing you need to do when you want to shop for something is don't buy yet. Hold your horses because we need to understand that a lot of our purchases are done because of our impulses. Most in stores structure their layout to prompt us to buy more. They have marketing strategies that tell us what we need. And maybe we also get influenced by videos. And we tell ourselves that we must get one of it as well. It's done so subtly to a point where it's almost impossible for anyone to tell if it's an impulsive purchase or it's something that we need. All we can do is wait for it. Because impulse has no patience. But we do. If we are able to wait till it fades, we win the game for not falling into the impulse trap. If we decided to purchase it even after the wait, we also win the game because that shows that the purchase is intentional enough to go through the waiting time. We can't be sure that it will bring us value, but at least we know we took some time to reflect. We can set a rule for ourselves. We can wait for hours or even days. And the waiting time is for us to think thoroughly before we can make the decision to purchase or drop the idea. And that's called the wait for it rule. Other than that, my favorite way to curb impulsive purchase is the wishlist strategy. I'll record the things that I want to buy on the wishlist. The action of us recording can make us feel that we had already made an action. And that action is better than keying your credit card details. I've created a wishlist strategy template at the description below. I'm using Notion for it, so if you're interested, you can check out the template. Meanwhile, during the wait, it's time for us to reflect. Why do you want to buy it? Sometimes, we just want to find reasons for us to have a short dopamine rush from owning something new. But that shouldn't be a good reason for us to buy them. The reasons might be unpersuasive. That's when we should think twice before we act. Knowing the why allow us to drop the idea of buying it. And that can also strengthen the reason why we want it. Don't you already have this? During the time when we are waiting for impulse to fade, it's useful if we can look at what we have already owned. If you already have something that serves the same purpose, then why are we getting something new? Think about the benefits of consuming less, whether is it less waste or saving more money, that can motivate us to use what we already have and consume intentionally. If we really have to buy a new one, always remember this rule, one out, one in. You need to remove the old in order to receive the new. That can prevent us from hoarding a bunch of tools or products that serve the same purpose. Is that a need or a want? I'm never against the thought of buying something we want, but by categorizing them into these two, that will deeply affect how intentional we are when it comes to making this purchase. That's when we can prioritize the essentials. Can you afford it? That's an important question we have to consider. And the question, can you afford it? It's not as easy as checking your bank account. If you can't afford it, drop the idea. Taking up loan just to buy products is never a good idea. Most of the time, we can afford it. But what I mean is, does this purchase align with your financial goal? And if you still don't have the basic idea of what you want to achieve financially, I'll say it's better for you to spend time to discover your financial goal instead of thinking what you should buy. For me, I have these extra questions to ask myself before spending on things that I considered as a want. Are you in debt? Have you built your emergency fund? What's your long-term financial goal? The answers to this question might vary from people to people, but the whole purpose is to align ourselves to what we want to achieve instead of being tempted by short-term happiness of this impulsive purchase. Is it within the budget? If the cost is still within the range of your financial capacity, setting a budget for ourselves is the next step to take so we can make the best decision based on our financial situation. When we want to buy something, there's always the best quality, the fanciest looking products that we aspire to own. 
just because it signals reliability and class. Instead, we should pick the best quality that fits us and also within our financial capability. What are the intangible costs? Other than the money we spend on buying things, we also need to consider the intangible costs like the space that holds the thing, the time spent on using it, the energy used to maintain it, and not to mention the opportunity cost of buying it. Because the amount spent on this might put into good use if we spend it on other opportunity, for example, paying off debt. Those are some of the intangible costs we have to take into consideration so we can weigh the pros and cons. Does it bring value? Understanding ourselves and knowing what we value is another important factor that will deeply affect the way we shop. And that depends on what kind of minimalist you are. And that can make our shopping decisions swift and easy. For example, if you are a frugal minimalist, price will be your main element of your decision making. If you are an eco-friendly minimalist, buying something that has minimal eco-footprint will be the key. And if you value aesthetics, the looks of the product definitely affect the choice you make. Knowing what brings us value allow us to make better decisions and also reduce decision fatigue. Is it just another trend? Trends come and go. Buying trends don't just waste our money on seasonal gimmicks. It also costs us to hold on to things that serve us only for that moment, hoping that the trend will come back again. Most of the time, it doesn't. And it just spends the rest of its life in the drawer or on the shelf. And it might be one of those purchases that we bought and totally forgotten about. And looking back at my wish list, there are so many things that I wanted previously that seem so ridiculous to me now. Have you done your research? Researching is another important step during the wait because that can help us to make the most intentional purchase. Or maybe let us give up on redundant ones. This is the step when I identify if the products can truly bring me value. Does it make me a better person? Does it make my life better? Or does it increase the quality of my work? By researching and reading comprehensive reviews, we can discover the best quality within our budget, even without owning it personally. We might even come to a conclusion that the things that we want to buy might not be as good as what we expected. I know, sometimes, the more we research, the more we want the products. And it's something that happens to me quite often. We try to justify a want into a need. But of course, other questions I've mentioned previously are good filters for us to identify if we should buy it. Is it within the list? Not all of our purchases are significant for us to put in so much effort to reflect and research, especially if it doesn't cost much. We probably experience this once a week, while we are out doing our grocery shopping, or even when we head out for our meal. Because the number one impulsive purchase we spend on is none other than food and groceries. I think it's all because of the cost and how convenient it is to grab a bar of chocolate beside the cashier. Not to mention, not all of us can fight off the temptation of our cravings. Me neither. In order to prevent ourselves from buying excessively, we need to have a list of things that we want to buy, plan in advance, and stick with it religiously. Don't add in extra stuff in your cart physically or virtually just because you have a craving. Does buying sale items save money? Don't be tempted by sale. Buying sale items randomly doesn't make you save more. In fact, we are spending and wasting more money buying unnecessary stuff during sale. But I have to agree that sale can be helpful if the product is something that we truly need and we have gone through all the steps we have mentioned before. But always remember, don't buy excessive or duplicate items just because the store are providing good deals. Get what you need and get out. And these are some of the questions you can use before you make a purchase so you can shop intentionally. Minimalism is never about depriving ourselves to own less or a lifestyle where we ban ourselves from buying stuff or live like a hermit with self-imposed deprivation. And these questions align our action with our value and goals that we're trying to achieve and make us more intentional with the things that we purchase. So that's all I have for you guys. If you are here for the first time and enjoyed watching this video, I have other videos on minimalism and self-development on this channel. If you want to support this channel, you can help me with the like button and follow me on my Instagram. I'll keep you guys updated. I have a Patreon page where you can support this channel monetarily. And I truly appreciate the support I've received from you guys. 
Thanks for watching this, and I'll see you guys again next one. Next one. Next week.